In my last video, instead of recording my face the entire time, I put up some clips of wildlife in the background while I was talking, and people seemed to really love that. So enjoy a little biodiversity. As you may know, I was recently on the Sam Devis podcast, When Belief Dies, to answer some questions that Sam had about evolution. I was responding to some things that John Lennox had said when he visited Sam's podcast, and we ended up just covering pretty much every question that people have about evolution when they're coming from a young earth creationist or intelligent design background. So it was a really cool conversation. The clip that I'm going to show you here is where we start discussing transposable elements, also known as jumping genes. You can find a link to the entire podcast down in the video description. Jumping genes are not well understood by the general public, and because of this, anti-evolutionists have recently latched on to them, claiming that jumping genes somehow contradict evolution. On the website evolutionnews.org, which is actually a creationist website disguised as a real science blog, those little rascals, over there they suggest that jumping genes are evidence of intelligent design. On Ken Ham's website, Answers in Genesis, jumping genes are claimed to be the tools of God, allowing creatures to reorganize their own DNA after the flood. So here is Sam's question about jumping genes, followed by my response. And for the record, Barbara McClintock, the discoverer of jumping genes who we talk about, she was not an anti-evolutionist. She appears to have understood what most biologists understand today. Jumping genes came about through the process of biological evolution. Here's the clip. Barbara McClintock, and I'm not saying she necessarily you know, kind of like swings one way, one way or the other, I'm not sure, but I know lots of theists use her work, especially with... Um, a specific sort of crop and um, sort of gene splicing it can do itself as potential pointers to the intelligence that again genes can have i know you've already touched on this but it's just it's just such it is almost like one of the pillars of theistic evolution uh, i just think it's really important to yeah. kind of touch on it so kind of would you mind kind of giving us your view kind of on gene splicing of a specific crop and why that therefore makes some theists believe that there must be an intelligence within the gene mm -hmm. uh, to make it make those switches if uh, a certain section of the genome is damaged barbara mcclintock was a corn geneticist or she's a geneticist and she worked a lot on corn and back in the 1940s she discovered what we now call transposable elements or commonly called jumping genes. These are stretches of DNA, genes within our genomes, genes in the genomes of corn and pretty much everything, which are able to jump around within the genome. So they can actually, some of them will cut themselves out and then insert themselves into a different spot in the genome. They, they code for a protein that can allow them to do that. And then others will actually just make copies of themselves. They will make a copy of their, their genome and just insert that somewhere else in the host's genome. Jumping genes obviously can cause all sorts of chaos. They are considered mutagens. They cause mutations. Every time they just move around, even if they're just ones that do the uh, cut paste, moving around can cause all sorts of chaos inside the genome. Uh, the ones that can copy and paste, those obviously they can fill up your entire genome. You could be nothing but this transposable element it could be nothing but this jumping gene. So they're very uh, detrimental to an organism. However, when we find these in our genomes, and by the way, our genome consists like almost like 40% of our genome consists of transposable elements. And when we find these elements, we see that they are being suppressed by other stretches of DNA in our genome. So we are producing molecules that actively suppress these jumping genes so that they can't jump. And actually, most of the jumping genes in humans are, are extinct jumping genes. They've suffered a mutation that stopped them from being able to do what they used to do. We can tell they're jumping genes by their sequence, but then we see that they're broken. Uh, point mutations have broken them. So they're ancient remnants of past jumping genes. One of the things that Barbara McClintock discovered, she was working with strains of corn that were super, super inbred. And they were inbred to the point that there was all sorts of problems with the corn. And she found that sometimes the problems could be fixed. Like these jumping genes, they would cause new traits to emerge. Just when a chunk of DNA moves to a new spot in the genome, it can cause a new trait. Some, sometimes they would cause a new color of the leaf. Sometimes they, they'd cause a new color of the, uh, the uh, corn kernel. And sometimes they would reverse 
negative mutations that have happened in the past just by moving around and you can actually re reverse some damage that had been done earlier. There is an adaptation that we know of in bacteria. It's called the SOS system. It's a whole system that when a bacteria is really stressed out, when it's, when it's a DNA is being damaged, it starts producing a protein that will stop the cell from trying to reproduce. When a cell is reproducing, that's a really stressful thing to be doing. It takes a lot of energy and it can cause DNA damage in and of itself. And so when there's already DNA damage in the cell, the bacteria will produce a protein that stops the cell from trying to reproduce. And instead it will focus all of its efforts, all of its energy on trying to repair the damaged segments of DNA. And then once that's sufficiently repaired, it will start reproducing again. The SOS system is obviously an adaptation that bacteria have evolved for survival and reproduction. And one of the arguments that some scientists have been making is that jumping genes might be an adaptation as well that's very similar to the SOS system. And the reason they have been making this argument is that normally jumping genes are not jumping around in the genome. They only start jumping around when a cell is really, really stressed out. And so they're saying, oh, well, maybe this is like the SOS system. Maybe what's happening here is that when the plant is really stressed, what that means is that whatever it's it's doing isn't working. And so in a desperate attempt to uh, try something, try anything that might make things better, it's going to just let these jumping genes jump all over the place, mutate the heck out of its genome, and then maybe it will suffer a mutation that happens to help it. This is what we call mutational rescue. And there is evidence that mutational rescue has helped plants in the past. Uh, we know that there are beneficial mutations, uh, beneficial gene sequences that plants have that were caused by jumping genes moving around in their genomes. And because jumping genes really only move around when the plant is really stressed, the obvious conclusion here is that this, these adaptations were the result of mutational rescue. So the argument that scientists are making, they're arguing, some of them, and this is a minority, they are arguing that jumping genes evolved for rearranging our genomes when there's an emergency. Intelligent design advocates have latched onto this, and they're saying, oh, look, jumping genes are a form of intelligent engineering. These, these genes are engineering the genome. They are intelligent entities. And it's kind of a weird argument because they're... <laughs> I'm not totally sure where they're trying to go with this because the intelligent design community exists to argue for the existence of God and he's the intelligent designer. But now they're saying that there's these jumping genes that are also intelligent designers. They're just using this to kind of like throw in some woo woo muck into the waters. Like, Oh, look, there are these intelligent agents that are inside of our genomes and they help us adapt to new situations. Therefore, Jesus rose on the third day, you know? It's kind of a desperate attempt to make something seem more special than it is. Well, it turns out that the origin of jumping genes, we don't know the origin of all of them, but we know that the origin of a lot of them is viral infections. Viruses do something very similar to jumping genes and that they take their genomes and they insert their genomes into our genomes. Retroviruses do this. Then when the time is right, they will start building viruses. Those viruses will escape and get into another cell. Well, the enzymes that they use to get their genomes into our genomes, those are the same enzymes that a lot of these jumping genes are using. And so it looks like these jumping genes are atrophied viruses. So their origin is a viral origin. They weren't inserted there by Jesus. They weren't, they didn't evolve specifically for the purpose of saving us and a desperate situation through mutational rescue. These appear to be the genomes of viruses. And we know that when a virus infects a cell, the cell starts doing all sorts of things to try to silence that virus from doing its work. But if you stress a cell out, it can't stop the virus from doing its work and the viral infection will go crazy. I mean, people who have uh, like cold sores, have noticed this, that when they get sick, they start to have an outbreak of their cold sores. And that's because their, you know, their, their body can't keep fighting off that virus, can't stop that virus from doing its thing. And so it goes and it does its thing and it causes chaos for the person. So this is exactly what we see jumping genes doing. They are active only, almost only when the cell is stressed. 
The rest of the time, they are being actively uh, silenced by the cell. And so it looks to me and to many other people like this entire system is not actually a system that evolved to help us when times are tough. Instead, it is just an example of genetic conflict. The cleanest explanation is that jumping genes are selfish genetic elements, which sometimes end up doing good things for their hosts. But really, they're just trying to make copies of themselves. They're trying to do their own thing. And the rest of the genome is trying to suppress them and stop them from causing absolute chaos. Barbara McClintock's work is wonderful. She, she won the Nobel Prize for it. It's in every biology textbook. Really fascinating stuff. Jumping genes have had a huge impact on our evolution. Uh, but we don't have reason to think that they're some sort of an intelligent entity. And finally, in this little last bit, is something that the creationists will not tell you about. They don't want to know about this, for sure, is that the vast majority of the things that jumping genes do for humans is they give us diseases. So hemophilia is caused by jumping genes. Uh, muscular dystrophy is caused by jumping genes. M a whole bunch of different cancers are caused by jumping genes. So these, the vast majority of the mutations that they cause are detrimental. It's just on very rare occasions, they can cause a mutational rescue to occur. You can find a link to the entire podcast down in the video description.